Um, thanks for joining us. You're one of the v retiring veterans of the uh, Assembly at this election. What do you think have been the highs and lows of your, your 10 years on the Assembly? Well, veteran. I've done 10 years, so I don't know whether that makes me a veteran or not. But yeah, I, well, I've seen both uh, former mayors, Ken Livingston uh, and Boris Johnson. Uh, the highs, if we've been able to make a difference in some areas, make the case for more and better housing. I've done a lot of work on the environment and air quality, mm -hmm. uh, and things are starting to happen uh, on that. Uh, lows, well, there's just so much more that needs doing. Uh, during my time, uh, the number of people on, on housing waiting lists, for example, have gone up and up and up. Uh, so we've got something like 800,000 people on council registered housing waiting lists now. That's gone up, not down in my term. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some things to be proud of, some things a lot more work needs doing on. I was very interested at the final assembly meeting. There were some very glowing tributes to you uh, from the other parties, which I thought perhaps stood in contrast to perhaps some of the Yabu politics I'd seen before in the Assembly. Do you think, is it how easy is it to cooperate with other parties? Well, one of the things that makes the Assembly different from, say, local councils and indeed from Parliament is because our role is holding the Mayor to account, raising issues uh, that concern Londoners, but we don't actually control the budgets, the spending, the actual big decisions. It's easier for us to work cross-party because when we speak as one on the assembly, we, we tend to get listened to by the media, by the mayor, never enough by the mayor, I might say, uh, mm -hmm. either of the two mayors that we've had. Uh, but so I think there's an inbuilt um, sort of imperative to work together so that we speak more strongly. Um, whether uh, people are always very nice when you announce you're retiring, so <laughs> I didn't take that too seriously, but it was a nice, uh, mm -hmm. it was a nice mm -hmm. exit. You were elected onto the GLC back in, back in the I 80s. Was, yes. How does it? How does the Assembly compare to the GLC? I'm sure there are. Oh, the GLC had a much greater ambition, I think. I mean, admittedly, it went back to pre-war, the great giants of Morrison and Abercrombie with the great London building plan. Um, the GLC at County Hall, uh, there were 70 uh, or even 90, I think, uh, GLC members, whereas there's just 25 of us. So the GLC had that weight of history uh, and, and, as I say, a much bigger ambition about what London needs. I hope we can get back to that. Um, mm -hmm. There are changes coming in terms of the powers of the GLA. It was originally set up very modestly by the, the Labour government that came in in the 90s. And gradually we've got more power, the mayor's got more responsibility. There are some big things coming. So I think actually I'm, I'm leaving at an interesting mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. when I hope the, my successors and whoever is the mayor, and obviously I'm backing Brian Paddock as a Liberal Democrat, but whoever is the mayor, uh, I think there's a real job of work to be done to get the houses built, get the air uh, cleaned up, getting our young people into work. During the draft budget setting process, you were pushing for a cut on the precept which at the time wasn't in the mayor's budget, there then miraculously became a cut in the precept. Do you feel you're responsible for that at all? Uh, I would like to take some credit, uh, but the, uh, our analysis was that the finances allowed a, a small, it was only £10 on £300, uh, but it was a, a gesture at the time when Londoners, many Londoners are, are suffering, uh, not just unemployed people, but people who've still got jobs are not seeing a big, any sort of increase in their wages. Um, there's been a lot of reorganisation, a lot of uh, work being done to save money at City Hall. We felt it was right to pass some of that on to London. And we think actually council tax is a very bad tax anyway, and we should be moving taxes onto property, onto high incomes. I suppose one of the concerns with cutting taxes at this point, though, is it does reflect, it, it reduces the amount of income that the Assembly has to spend on retaining jobs and, and, and on public services. At a time of public austerity, is there not a problem with reducing that? Well, that we were also able on the spending side to redirect the spending into things that are higher priority. So we were funding that small tax cut out of, for example, cutting the, the extraordinary things that are still going on in the police, for example, where they get chauffeur-driven cars, free accommodation, the senior officers, not the ordinary policemen, but the senior people, and, mm -hmm. and the democratic accountability over the police still hasn't yet really changed the way they, they operate. Uh, there's a lot of spending here at City Hall uh, on things like press and publicity, which we would uh, uh, economise on. 
So we were trying to get that balance right. It's a, it's a fair question. Uh, we're not obviously as Lib Dems a, a kind of tax cutting for the sake of it party. Mm -hmm. We are. We do believe in taking the tax burden off the poorest people and applying it at the upper end for people who, who can afford it. But speaking of the police, there's a lot of focus on police numbers, which has meant that although there are cuts in cuts to the budget, those are falling on back from staff. And those appear to be um, impacting on safe neighbourhood teams. Um, is, there, is there a problem with focusing on uniforms rather than a, a more rounded police service? I, again, I understand the point. Although there have been some cuts, the current Mayor Boris Johnson is cutting the frontline policing by taking the sergeants out. So this is uniformed people. He is reducing the number of uniformed uh, officers. Uh, in the safer neighbourhood teams. We think that's wrong. Well, actually, we think we should maintain the, the numbers uh, on the front line, uh, economise, yes, in the back office, looking for kind of using technology and the efficiencies, and then really changing the way those uniformed uh, staff are deployed so that they're out on the streets at the time that Londoners say uh, they need them, whether it's coming home late at night on the tube or on a Saturday night in the high streets or Friday night. Um, so we think the safer aid neighbourhood policing uh, police teams really need to be much more accountable to people in their communities for the sort of policing they want. And it also means the police can get to know the communities better. And so some of the tensions that we've seen, which was part of what the riots were all about, uh, the police being out of touch, uh, that would be the way to, to counteract that. One of the other issues you've been pushing on is the Fire Brigade Museum. Yes. Um, why is this important? Uh, when there's so many other things going on? Well, because actually closing it, so the proposal from the Conservatives is to close the, 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 the museum, which is a very modest little affair, but there's some great things in there. The schools love it, the kids come. They not just learn about the history of London, they also learn about current fire safety, so it's a great little thing. Closing it wouldn't actually save any money. It's a classic example of the Conservatives kind of knowing the, the price of everything but the value of nothing. And so we've been arguing to keep it open and I'm pleased to say it looks like it can stay open for another year while a sort of longer term plan it gets put in place. So that might go down on my list of things uh, that I take a modest amount of credit for. The uh, direction of the fire service in general in, in London has been, I think there has been a very clear direction of travel in that we're now seeing the outsourcing of 999 yep. uh, call centres and also the, there's a new PFI project around the reconstruction of nine uh, fire stations. Um, I think the Fire Brigades Union in particular is concerned about the introduction of the private sector in public services. Um, absolutely, and one of the things that happened in the past was Asset Co, as it's called, where basically uh, all the fire engines and the equipment is actually owned by a private company and maintained and leased back to the authority. I, I mean, again, as Lib Dems, we don't take a public sector is always good, private sector always bad, or the other way around. We think it's pragmatic uh, the judgment you make. So privatising the 999 thing is simply crackers. You, there's no competitive market in 999 calls. You just mm -hmm. phone the number and you want absolutely highly professional public service servants serving. But building fire stations, well, I'm very happy to have the private sector in, you know, doing the bricks and mortar. The equipment stuff is much more mixed. That was done, it worked well for a number of years. It's not working so well now. That might need to be brought back in house. The problem is the contracts have all been signed and it gets quite expensive. So we've had the London Liberal Democrat uh, conference this weekend. Yeah. Were there concerns about the prospects for May? About what the election's gonna look like? Uh, not concerns, quite a lot of optimism. Uh, I think the mood among the Lib Dems is that the public is going to get kind of bored of the Boris and Kent kind of show when actually there's not a lot of difference on most of their policies uh, and are looking I think at the Lib Dems certainly in terms of the mayoral but also we're saying whoever is the mayoral candidate let's have a strong team of Lib Dems on the assembly to hold them to account to make the case as I've been trying to do for many 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 more houses clearing up the air Yes, uh, cleaning up the air in terms of the air quality and the pollution, and yes, on the policing issues, where of course mm -hmm. Brian Paddock has got some very interesting ideas. On the Assembly, the Liberal Democrats tend to block with the Labour and Green groups, um, and obviously nationally, uh, you're in coalition with the Conservatives. Is there a, a difference between the London Liberal Democrats and the National Party? Uh, not between the National Party. Um, uh, obviously, uh, nationally, the MPs are in coalition 
uh, with the Conservatives. That was in the national interest to try and deal with the financial crisis. Um, uh, it comes as no surprise to anybody that there are tensions in that process. Mm -hmm. Obviously, locally, we are an entirely independent party. We work to put our ideas forward. And you're right, when there's a Conservative mayor, there's a bit of a tendency for the non-Conservative parties to kind of work together. Um, when there was a Labour mayor, actually, it worked the other way. Um, and um, uh, we were happy to work with, uh, with whoever was holding the then Ken Livingston mayor to mm -hmm. account. So it, it isn't, I wouldn't read any great ideological things into it. What we try and do is push forward on the things we care about. So my final question is, you have been on the Assembly for 10 years, and this is um, the end of that time for you. What's next for you? Oh, well, uh, a little bit of time off. Um, I'm not promising to spend more time with my family, which is the, the normal <laughs> politician's answer. I am promising to give them slightly higher priority. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be able to take a holiday uh, when, they, when they stop school rather than waiting until all our official meetings are over. So I shall carry on being active in politics, but just not quite uh, from the great platform of City Hall. That's great. Thank you very much.